Hey, Stampers, Diane Divich here with DDStamps.com, and I hope that you're all out there. If you are, please let me know one way or the other um, by commenting. You can comment on Facebook down in the comment box below. You can comment on YouTube over in the comments box. There should be one. Um, or on my website. I want to thank you all for coming. Let me know. Let me know if you can hear me and see me because that would help. I, uh, you know, it's been a long time since I've done one of these. And I've been a little busy with some new things going on in my life. I had to take some classes. I actually ran for city council in November and I won. And I took my seat at the council table in um, January. And it has been kind of a whirlwind. Uh, I had a couple other things going on in my life that had to take precedence. And actually, I have never had any. Oh, good morning, Pam. Good morning, Cindy. Glad you guys made it. Um, Bobby's here. Yay, Lori's here. Good. Sounds like people can see and hear me. I don't know about my website because I haven't gotten kind of confirmation there, but that's all right because um, they'll let me know. Anyway, I did have a couple things going on. And actually, I've never in my life ever experienced anxiety, but I did. And it happened to evolve around doing online things. And I don't know why. Um, but I was just having some issues and I just thought I'm not, I, I couldn't add another thing to my plate at that point. And I took a vacation last week out to Chicago to see my, my daughter and came home with a good attitude. I, I wasn't having trouble in the rest of my life, really. I, there's, like I said, there were some things going on, but I just, I've never experienced that. And it would happen to the point where I would be getting ready to write the email to say that I was going to do an online thing. And I couldn't do it. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So anyway, I'm back. Uh, things are good with everybody in my family. I hope everything's good with your family. Um, and we are just going to go ahead and get started. And hopefully I've got everything going. It looks like we're doing well. Roberta's here. Yep, she's over on. And Lana can hear me. Lori can hear me. Good. I still haven't heard from Bev's here. Yay. Mary, Mary Ellen, Bonnie, there's lots of people. Like I said, I still haven't heard and there may, just may not be somebody over on my... I'm just trying to think. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> I was just trying to think if... But I, the comment box is at, over there on my website, so. Okay, sorry. Let's go ahead and get started. As you know, we can't... I can answer questions as we're going through today. Now I'm going to have problems with my mouse. There we go. Okay. Yes, I am going to have problems with my mouse. There we go. Okay. Cool. As you know, I can answer questions while we are live, but I've also had people send me questions. I just wanted to give you a little bit, um, a little bit of information before we get started. And so if you will look at the screen, I'm having... I am having issues with my mouse, and I don't know why, because I have a battery in it, but we'll just... Anyway, if you look down at the screen where that big red arrow is down below the YouTube sign, this is just a screenshot of a video that I did a while back, but I wanted you to know that that little gear down there, if you're having trouble, if it's having trouble uploading, it's having trouble downloading, um, it's just is, is kind of funky, I guess you could say. You can click that little gear and you can either raise or lower the um, speed at which you're getting the feed. And it really all depends on the, the speeds that I'm going up um, into the cloud and that the speeds that's coming back to your computer. So sometimes if it's choppy, it's just because it's not a very good connection. And then the other arrow down below where it says auto refresh comments, if that is checked, if you're on Facebook and that's checked, it is. Um, what happens is every 90 seconds, the comments refresh. And if you're in the middle of typing something, you are going to get a, uh, it's going to, you're going to lose your comment and it's going to refresh and it's going to be gone. You're going to have to start over. So my recommendation is to unclick that and then write your comments. You can always click refresh on the other side where it says refresh now, but you, I don't want you to be in the middle of refreshing something and have it disappear. So let's see if I can get my, there we go. So questions that people had. We did have a couple questions that were turned into me. And I'm actually going to go over to my stamp table to answer these because I find that e it's easiest as soon as I can get my mouse to work. 
Of course, we'd have to have some issues today just because that's how life is. I'm coming back on screen for a second here. And it's so weird about my mouse. Um, I'm not really sure how I'm going to figure out to get that to work better. But we'll get there. It just might take me a little bit more time. As you can see, the sun is shining in at my table. So it may take me just a bit to, uh, or you might have a little sunshine in your eyes. Can't really argue with the sun shining today. It's a beautiful day here. Oh, look, people are on my website. Yay. So Lorraine has made it. Good. People can hear me over there too. Martha's here. Good. Yay. Yeah, I have to tell you, it does feel good to be back. People are commenting about that. Um, and hopefully, I really struggled with finding something to, or finding my, mo my mojo to stamp, which is kind of scary. One of the things that I did continue to stamp the whole time was our paper pumpkin. I, I get that kit each month. And that helps because it's a completely done project. Let me show you a couple of samples that I did actually for this month's kit. So I got the kit, and it was great. It had these two cards in it. And then they came, oh, that sun is going to be a problem, isn't it? Let me see if I can block that a little bit somehow. Maybe. Does that help a little bit? Maybe not. Anyway, these were the two cards that came in, this, in the kit for this month. Where is that sun? Isn't that funny? Everything's going to fall off my counter now because I put a block up there. Let me try another one. Let's hope I don't. doesn't make it worse. I should have checked this out. I didn't think I was going to have a problem with it because I figured the sun would have moved by now. That's the problem with going and doing this at a different time of day. Usually I do it at night. So... Okay, anyway, so I did these two cards. These came in the kit. You got enough supplies to do four of each. And they were actually very dimensional, lots of little embellishments. Very cute. And then they sent stuff to make envelopes with them, but they were, they were so pretty, I wanted to do cards with them. And so I just cut the envelopes apart and attached them to some early espresso was the ink color that came with the kit and just made them into cards too. So I ended up with... Excuse me, 16 cards out of my kit. I was pretty happy with that. I can always add an envelope. Questions? Okay. Let me move this stuff that fell down. I have this little catch-all basket up in the window. Um, some of the questions that were asked is, how do I get a full a stamp with a full image? I'll stamp and I'll only get part of the image. Okay, so I pulled out um, this stamp set, the Party Pandas. I think this was so cute. This was one of my favorite um, celebration stamps and I'm just going to stamp it with a basic black ink and so what I would recommend that you do number one is before you stamp with this with the stamp it isn't a bad idea to clean it sometimes the stamps have a little bit of uh, you know something on them a little coating on them and if you take that off your stamp will ink better and then once you ink it up and you'll see on this one this is actually a linen a linen um, ink pad and so I'm stamping it a few times and giving it a little twist and how why I do that is because I get a better even coating of ink and this was a clean stamp so you can see that I actually have black ink all over it um, it's not a bad idea to flip over your stamp and make sure that you've inked up the whole thing and then you're just gonna go straight down no rock and just straight down with your stamp and pull it up and you should get a pretty good image um, this is a great image I'm pretty happy with it so um, the pan is kind of difficult because it has those solid areas that makes it just a little bit harder for people to get a good image. Another thing, that's for your wood stamps. Let me move that out of the way. Second, if you're going to do, let's say you're going to use a photopolymer stamp. And I just grabbed this one. Let's see, I've used this on some, on some projects. One of the things that I do differently with my photopolymer stamps is I actually use one of our this is our foam pad as a piercing pad, and it's great because it's got a little bit of give to it, but it's real firm. And I'm going to open up my Melon Mambo ink, I'm going to ink up my stamp, and because it's photopolymer, 
uh, I find I get a better stamped image if I snap it on. Oh, I got carried away there. I pushed a little hard. You don't have to push as hard, I guess. But you get a better image just because that little bit of cushion. Now, you could use a mouse pad. doesn't necessarily have to be um, a piercing pad, but it works great for me. The other thing that I found that works is if I'm at a workshop and I've got a big room full of people, I'll have them just use a catalog or a couple pieces of paper. I do have, this is a, this is just a covered piece of a cutting mat. And then I have some papers underneath it. But that's enough cushion too. Just a little bit of a cushion helps. And even just a couple extra pieces of cardstock would help. So I hope that helps get, you, get, get a better image. Um, okay, being new to stamping, I'm looking for tips on inking stamps evenly without getting blocked. So I think I kind of showed that when I showed that panda bear where I twisted a little bit, I stamped it a few times and twisted. That kind of helps. Um, somebody's wondering about the types of ink, which ones are best for coloring that won't smear, and how to re-ink a stamp pad. Okay, I'm going to bring a couple of ink pads out. So these are the two that I just used. This is a classic ink. And it's Melon Mambo. And all of our colored inks come with in the classic. The other ink that we have is our archival black ink. And we have archival basic gray ink too. Those two inks are waterproof. So you can watercolor with them and it shouldn't smear. The classic inks will smear with the watercolor just because it gets wet. Um, it will smear. The other inks that we have that you could use is we have our Memento ink. And this actually is also an ink that is a dye ink. This is good to use when you're using your blendabilities. Now, if you use the blendabilities with the archival ink, it may, it'll smear because the inks, you need to use a dye-based ink with your, with your alcohol markers because they're two different chemicals in them, so it won't smear. I hope that makes sense. Hope I'm not confusing people. So what I found is all of our color inks that are classic inks are good for stamping. Um, archival inks are great for watercoloring. I hope that answers your question and they shouldn't spare. Now to re-ink an ink pad, I'm going to go ahead and re-ink the Melon Mobile. Let me grab it here. One of the reasons I like to do these workshops live is because everything I own is in front of me. So I can always, um, grab what I need as we go here. So that's what I mean about asking questions. So I've got a Melon Mambo re-inker and an ink pad. And one of the things with these ink pads, these new ones, is they're foam. And so the ink really does stick right to the top, and you don't need a ton of it. So I would add, so let's say I was going to re-ink this, I would add some ink, just kind of smear it around a little bit. And then I would take the back of a spoon, or I'm going to use a foam folder. See, I've used this before because it's got ink on it. And just like frosting a cake, you just kind of give that ink a little bit, just smear it around a little bit to move that ink around to make it even. You will get ink on the end of your, on the end of your uh, bone folder. You can just wipe that off. Anyway, so that's how all you do. The thing is with our newest ink pads is you don't need a ton of ink on them because the ink sits towards the top of it. And if you get too much ink on there, then you're going to end up with real blobby images. Okay. Someone said, I have some stamps that don't seem to grab a hold of the ink very well. So clean your stamps before you start. And she's wondering if it's inexperienced or there's a big difference in quality. And I will tell you, there is a big difference in quality of inks and stamps and paper and cardstock. And that's one of the reasons that I love stamping up because the quality is so good. But so if you get some other stamps that the quality isn't quite as good, you may have some issues with that. You should not have those issues with your Stampin' Up! stamps. Um, how do you attach a vellum without it showing? Oh, that was a question yesterday. So let me grab a piece of vellum. Let's have a scrap here. So here's a piece of vellum. Vellum is, you can see through it a little bit. It's really uh, delicate. Well, although this is cardstock, so it's a little bit thicker. But one of the things that somebody was asking me was, how do you attach vellum onto a piece of cardstock? Let me grab some cardstock here. Here we've got Melon Mambo. And if I wanted to attach that on there, you're going to be able to see through it. But let me show you a couple things that you can do so you don't see through it. 
Let me cut this down and put it away. So let's say I had a card base. And I wanted to attach a piece of vellum onto the front of that. A couple of ways you can do that. I recommend that you use glue dots because you can really decide where that glue is going to be. And what I found is less is more. You don't need your vellum to be stuck with a whole bunch of stuff. And you're going to be able to see that little glue dot. You see that? Here it is. So one of the things I would recommend, nice because you can pull this off, you know, if that glue dot, let me show you what it looks like with just a regular snail. We're going to add that on there. And actually, I don't think, well, there you can, you can really see the snail. See that? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna pull this off. And again, I'm just using my thumb to take that off. I could have actually used a adhesive eraser. Um, one of the things that I would do with my vellum, let's say I'm gonna attach this on here. And this is gonna be my vellum. And I'm just gonna grab a punch. So I'm not going to stamp it or anything, but I'm just going to punch out a flower. And then, or it could be a label or anything. And if I'm using vellum, I would put the adhesive wherever I was going to have an image that was going to be layered. So then the vellum's attached, it's not coming off, but it doesn't show the adhesive. So I hope that answers your question. I believe that was from Sue. It was nice to get lots of questions this time around, so hopefully I got them all answered. Um, the last one was, do you use wax paper or plastic storage bags when using your intricate dies? I do not. I know people do, but I have not done that at this point. I use our uh, steel plate and the brush, which seems to work fine. Um, I'm going to come back online here so I can check around and see how we're doing question-wise. Oops. And now my mouse is working great. So I do not use the, the plastic bag. People do it. I used to use dryer sheets because it was easy then to pull it out. But since getting that steel plate and the brush, I, that seems to work for me. And I actually have the new platform for the Big Shot. It makes a big difference. So I would just keep trying and do what you have to do to... Uh... Hey, thanks, Mayor. My sister's online with me. <laughs> Good to be back. Okay, we've got lots of people. Irene's here from Maine. Uh, it's such a shame to have to block the sun. Yeah, but you know, I didn't really, as you can tell, I didn't block all the sun. I just blocked the sun in that little bit of area. So the sun still shines in here. The dog is actually sitting behind me, um, sunning herself. Okay, so I'm going to run around quickly and get some questions answered. Lots of people here. Emily, Norma, Barb, yay. Doris, Lynn. Oh God, for every People from all over. Well, okay, thank you. Okay, so now I'm on YouTube trying to answer questions. Um, thank you for your prayers, Lydia. Yeah, it's 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 okay. I really am doing feeling much better. I think getting away and uh, just having some time to not really think about everything else that's going on was good for me. So that's always good. Okay, so it looks like most questions were answered. If I missed your question, please don't hesitate to ask it again because I, if I, I, I don't want to miss it, and I will, I will certainly answer it. Okay, let me pull up the screen one more time. Okay, so I'm going to just go back. We're going to head back over to the stamp table so I can go do a couple of uh, demonstrations for you. Um, like I said, please feel free to ask questions. One of the things that I want you to be aware of is that this is the last week of celebration. Lots of fun stuff out there. But I'm going to show a couple things with some celebration stuff. And one of them is the celebration paper. This was new. Let me grab what I got here. Called springtime foil celebration and this was celebration paper it's 12 by 12 but as you can see it's got that foil on it it's so it's glossy cardstock 
with foiled images. And I've had some fun playing with this. And I just want to show you a couple of techniques of things that I've done. So I'm going to take a little piece of the foil striped paper. And I don't need a paper towel. And I'm going to go ahead and use my, mar my regular markers. So these are just our regular dye base markers. They have a brush end on one side and a fine tip on the other. I'm going to go ahead and use the brush end. And all I'm going to do is just take that marker and color it right down that line. And then I'm going to take a piece of a paper towel and just wipe it. And the reason I, I do it every time is because marker's going to get on the silver part of this, but it won't dry. And so I don't want to leave my markers together. That was amazing. See, my colors are all mixed up. One of the things in my life is my markers. I like to keep them in the same order. I know it's, it's strange. It's the only thing in my house that's actually organized really well, and then my markers, I like to keep them in the order. So anyway, as you can see, I went, went over the silver, and then I'm just going to wipe it off. And I'm going to just go down and use all of the bold colors, or the brights they call them. Now, we used to call them bold brights, but now they're just called brights. So this is Tangerine Tango. And again, I'm going to wipe it. Makes it a little bit lighter, but that's all right. A little pumpkin pie. So you could do this with, like, anything. You could color them all the same. You can color them with all pinks or all blues. That'd be pretty. You could pretty much do anything. Just want to show you quickly. And if you don't, if I, if I held off wiping it right away, I'd probably get a little bit darker color, but I'm okay with what I got. I, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. And the wiping of it really evens it out. Makes it, it's pretty. Let me do a couple more. This has been some fun paper to play with. This is a celebration one, so with a $50, you have to place a $50 order in order to pick the springtime foils, but you get 12 by 12 sheets. And I believe you get Four, three or four of each sheet. But anyway, so there you have that. Now what I did with this particular one, as you can see, is I just changed it into a card. Exact same thing I did here. I just went all the way through and then I added. Now this is actually four by five and a quarter. That way it'll layer onto a, a card base. I tied the silver trimmed ribbon around it and then I attached it to the front of a Mel and Mama cardstock piece. And then I just punched the label and really super quick and easy. But what a fun way to change up that foil paper. It's beautiful as it is, but then you when you add color, it's really, it really makes it pretty. So put these aside. I'll show you another thing that I did with that paper. Because I took a piece, this is the polka dot, it's, and this has like a it's like a bronze, I guess, foil on there, polka dots. I'm just going to use Calypso Coral and a sponge. I'm going to ink up my, and then I'm just going to smear it on there. And because you're using a glossy cardstock, that ink is really going to move, and you're going to get, you're going to get some great movement in that in that ink. But it's going to give it a real blended look. It's going to be not streaky as you move up. But I don't have to do the whole thing. So then you can just change it to any color that you want, anything that coordinates with whatever you're using. This is what I did yesterday. It's dry. Um, but you can see how it, it just changes the look of it. Makes it kind of fun. Now the last one that I did, I kind of liked this look. Oh, I should have grabbed a, just a second. Let me, I have a couple more to show. This one here, I'm going to cut the cardstock because I forgot to do that part. So I've got a piece of this with the vines on it, and it's beautiful as it is, and I took this piece and I just colored, as you can see, I colored in the leaves with just a really light green and end up with, a, it almost has like a mother of pearl look to it. But this time I'm going to take this piece, and you can actually do this, I, I believe, with most any color. 
I'm going to take my memento black this time. And I'm going to, I'm just going to smear this ink on here. And you change the look of this cardstock, but it, the um, silver foil part resists that ink. Once I've got that done, then I'm going to take a paper towel, a Kleenex, a napkin, and I'm just going to rub that out. And that just distributes the ink evenly and pulls it off that foil. I just think that is gorgeous, and you can do that with any color that you have. And it just changes up the look of the paper. So this is the one I colored, and this is the one, and this is actually the color of it when it's just white. So any color would work with this with this particular um, resist technique. So that's really fun cardstock. And then last I've got this piece here. I just took a piece of this foil flower paper and I colored in my flowers. And I obviously I used uh, blushing or blushing bride, I believe it is. Yeah. And then um, I believe that was old olive. And it is a little bit lighter, but isn't that beautiful? And I haven't even done anything with it, but I, I'm just going to add a ribbon and and make it cute. So I'm going to come back over there. Just a quick demonstration on using um, that paper and some resist techniques. And again, like I said, that paper is actually gorgeous just as it is. But then when you start adding color, it really makes things pop. See if anybody has any questions. Julie's at work, but she's going to watch tonight. Just just one, let me know. Cool. Hello, Diane. When is my birthday? My birthday was actually in February. Um, so I did have a birthday in there. Maybe that's why I had such issues. No, it wasn't. It wasn't a big birthday. Yeah, I love those techniques, too. Cindy, I love that rainbow card. I think it's beautiful. Um, good. I'm just checking YouTube to see if anybody has had questions over there. Do you think that foil paper will be back in the catalog? Uh, I no. I think that they would have told us if that foil. I can't say that there won't be other foil paper, which would be fine um, in the next catalog. There was a couple of items in celebration that will bump up to the next catalog, and they were the die cuts. And in fact, I'll show you which ones they were: the die cuts and uh the basket fold embossing folder so just real quickly the march tutorial uses the good day stamp set and oh i wanted to show you something with the with the tutorial so if you place an order of 40 dollars or more i send you a packet that coordinates with the um tutorial for the month which just means that um i'm going to show you a packet because you need to see what that what i'm talking about I'll show you last month's packet, and then I have, I'm actually going to send some of those out to people. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's go back to the stamp area. So when I talk about sending a packet out, so I send a tutorial each month, and then after, um, after the orders have been placed, I get these packets. And I actually use the hostess benefits for those parties to get the goods. Get the goods. So what you'll get is... You'll get this little packet that will come with all the supplies. Now, this was last month's packet, so it comes with the cardstock bases that you need. It comes with all the different colors of cardstock that you need to make for the tutorial. This particular one had um, some baker's twine, some of that beautiful berry burst silver trimmed ribbon, and then some of our white silver trimmed ribbon. And it came with a little box. Um, one of our little cube boxes, and then the papers from the, I can't remember, anyway, whatever the, whatever the paper was called. So what I usually do is I just cut them up into blocks of six by six, get a sample of each paper in the particular, whatever. I usually use a, a designer series paper, and so you always get a six by six of sample of each kind. You're going to use some of this for the cards that you're going to make in that tutorial. But this packet comes to you 
Um, for anybody that places an order over 40. And luckily today, I've got a couple extra packages um, of the kits from last month, and I'm going to give those away here shortly to somebody. And then I'll send you the tutorial so that you'll have the tutorial when you get your packet, and then you can play with it. Now, a lot of people will say, well, I don't have the stamp set. Well, the nice thing about the tutorials that I do is that you don't necessarily have to use the same tutorial or the same stamp set. The tutorials are just a, a springboard to help you get more use out of your stamps. So don't feel bad if you don't have, or yeah, if you don't have, you don't have to have every stamp set. Um, you can just use what you have. I say that a lot to people. Okay. So I'm just going to do quickly, somebody could not find me on Facebook, but found me on YouTube. Yeah, I'm actually on YouTube, Facebook, and my website. Doesn't look, okay. So I think we're good. Question-wise, oh, got over here, got to check over here. Thank you. Lorraine said that's the Sweet Sorry Designer Series paper, and that's exactly what it is. Um, Yep, Jenny got here a little late. That's all right. We don't mind people being late. Okay, so I'm going to go back over to my stamp room. I've got some stuff to show you. I'm really happy that my mouse began to work correctly again. That was my biggest fear. Sometimes when you do these workshops, um, in between, YouTube has done some grandiose update. And so I kind of panicked this morning and thought, well, if YouTube did some grandiose update while well, I haven't been on, I'm going to be in trouble. But actually, I think they actually made it a little bit easier. Okay, so I have a couple samples to show you. I have to show you this one because this is, I actually copied this directly from the catalog. But this is that roller coaster card. It is the cutest thing ever, but I will tell you, it was, it's a work of art. And it's, it's gorgeous and I love it. But I would really have to like somebody a whole lot to send them this card. I actually made it and I display it on in one of my shelves because it's so cute. But this is a fun die and a fun, fun stamp set. If you have time on your hands and you'd like to, to make creative works of art, this is a great thing to do. It's a little bit tricky getting the, uh, the rounding of those edges. But once you, once you figure it out, it's like anything. Once you do it a couple times, you got to figure it out and then you're good to go. But anyway, I wanted to show that because I actually did make the card and it turned out really cute. I've got some other samples here. This is the um, the bottle, the soda bottle, and the designer series paper that's in celebration. But these little these little uh, clear bubbles are adorable with that with that pop bottle. Um, is this called Beautiful Blooms? I have it tucked away. It's not called Beautiful Blooms. It's the celebration set. So it's this one here, which is that realistic looking stamp set. I just, this one I just stamped in different colors and then cut them out and did some dimension to them. And then this was just stamped in the berry color. And then this one here, this one's kind of pretty. This one I stamped in a very light, oh, I need a piece of a card on there. A very light gray ink. And then I used my um, watercolor pencils and I didn't watercolor it, I just colored it and just gave it a really light look. I love, I just really like the look of that one. And actually these, I think all these are on my website with tutor, with uh, PDFs for you to download to copy that. So I love those, those are celebration. Okay, this was a celebration. So this is the stamp set called Amazing You and it had those dies that coordinated with it. Um, and these are the dies that are going to be in the next catalog for sale. So this is amazing and I just actually, um, dot, cut it out of the Dazzling Diamonds glitter paper. So it's really pretty. This is the same stamp set, Amazing You, over and over and over. And then the U is done in silver, and that was a die. And then this was a whole set of cards I made using that same die. Let me let the dog out. She's going crazy right now. Sorry about that. So this is the paper I used was the party time paper. I don't know if that's not the name of it, but I'm sure somebody will tell me. So I just cut out paper and layered it and then cut out a black die. And I made a whole bunch of birthday cards with that paper. Really super simple. I love that paper. I thought it was kind of cool. It's 
people thought some people thought it was hard to work with because it's so realistic, but I liked it. And this one I had to actually hide from myself because it made me want to go eat um, sugar cookies. Imagine that. Okay. So I'm sure somebody has already said what what uh, paper that was. Let me see if I can find their answer. Okay. Heartfelt blooms. Thank you, Wanda. It was heartfelt blooms. Yeah, Marie says, I'm happy to know the foil papers are so flexible. They really are. It's amazing. I'm going to sneeze now. Just a second. Of course I am. <coughs> Jana also let me know that it was heartfelt blooms. Okay, I think I got questions answered. Now would be a good time. If you have a question, to post it up because I can pretty much see everybody's answers at this point. I'm going to ask a little question too. So this will mess with you. <laughs> um, let me head back over here. So like I said, the tutorial this month comes as, as it's a good day, but you'll see that I've used designer series paper in here. So the packet will have all the bases, all the ribbons, all the little pieces, even one of those little embroidery hoops, everything that you're going to need to finish the cards in there and, and some extras on top of that. Now I send the tutorials free to anybody who places an order. It's the people that place an order of $40 or more that get the packets. And if you order a, um, if you order more than $150, don't use the hostess code because you take the hostess benefits for yourself. That's just the way I like it. Okay, a couple of reminders. These are the in colors that are retiring this year. I would recommend that if you have any of those in, col in colors, now would be the time to place orders for the paper, the ribbons, the reinkers, anything that you want in those colors. Because April, I know it's hard to believe, but come April, which is just around the corner, they're going to post the retired list. And these are all going to be on there. And the in colors are the things, the reinkers and the cardstock is the things that go the fastest. So I'm just, this is just a reminder to you to know that the retirement list is coming. Um, and if you want any of these colors, now would be the time to order those reinkers and the cardstocks so that you don't miss out. Just that's just me reminding you. I wanted you to know that it's celebration, and with celebration comes some some uh, great benefits. Any fifty dollar order gets a free um, item, and I'm going to actually pop in here and I want to go to the store because they've added some stuff to the free. The freebies and I wanted to share that with you and those were your in colors so celebration they have things that you get for a $50 purchase and things that you get for $150 purchase and they've added a ton of stuff so let me pull up that and let me show you quickly some of these things are actually in the celebration brochures like the shimmer ribbon and this amazing you stamp set they've added some designer papers in here um uh knit embossing folder that knit cable embossing folder a couple of markers they just added a bunch of stuff uh because this is the time of year that things start to run out from their celebration stuff and people have already gotten everything they wanted but this is kind of a fun little kit that you can get uh it actually goes with the blend abilities it a little just a little quick reminder the blend abilities are at this point no longer orderable until June. They've had a supply issue. And um, so I just wanted to, they, they had more people bought blendabilities this celebration than they have in, you know. So they they have run out and they just decided it was easier to stop stop the sale of them until they get them back in stock. But they were they will be blendabilities will be in the next catalog. Uh, so this is a quick show of what, what else they have. Here's that foil paper. So you get four different designs. I'll show you a quick picture. It's just beautiful. I love it. And you get three sheets of each, 12 by three 12 by 12 sheets for each kind. And then spend $100. They have added a few things here too, I believe. Um, 
this blooming baskets this is one of them this comes as a bundle you have to have a, a hundred dollar order to get but this particular embossing folder will be in the next catalog it's a it's a great embossing folder and these dies will be available in the next catalog for purchase so those were the celebrate and amazing and you dies and let's see what did they add here oh they added uh the sweet cake framelits you could get those for free with a hundred dollar order or the petals and more so those are the the celebration items and that is with a fifty dollar order and i want to go back here a couple more things oh i know when i get so many screens open i forget what i'm supposed to be doing there we go okay so the hostess code this month like i said this is the hostess code um you're going to put that hostess code and we're actually not ready for the door prize drawing yet you can fill out your door prize drawing but i wanted to show um i have a little question to ask you and whoever answers the question correctly on facebook website youtube the first person to answer it correctly well hi frey uh, the first person to answer it correctly will get a packet, one of the packets for last month's tutorial. So, what was I showing you? Let me think. Sorry. Hey, Brittany, I'll be out there in a minute. <laughs> That's my, my son's girlfriend's here. Um, okay, the question. So, the question of the day is... To pull it up on my phone because I thought of this at the last minute. It's called Name That Tool. And we're just going to have one question, and the first person to answer it on each site is going to get a free packet and a tutorial from last month to complete those cards. This must have tool for all stampers will help you perfectly align images, stamp multiples of the same project quickly and precisely, and get complete ink coverage. Once this becomes available on June 1st in the new catalog, the stamp -a jig will become a thing of the past. So there you have it. Answer the question. I'm going to sneak over to my table, and we're going to show you. Got lots of people. Lots of people posted answers. It's a good thing the answers come up as I'm working here because... It would be hard to decide who was first, but it's whoever's name is first. Okay, so Emily Barnes is correct on Facebook. And that pen's not working. And Lynn Whitmire. is correct and last but not least on my Let's see if we got a correct answer Lorraine on my website is correct. So you three people have earned the packet and I will show you what I'm talking about. So the tool is the Stamparatus. Now I haven't used it a whole lot, um, but, and some people actually have it now because they pre-ordered it, but it will be available June 1st. And it is a great tool for stamping. Comes with two plates. And then this foam pad is in here. And I'm just going to show quickly how it works. So these plates are removable. And um, I will take a stamp here. I'm going to start. Oh, I took them off. Uh oh. OK, so I'm going to start with a piece of cardstock. And 
and a stamp. I was going to use this one, but it's dirty, but that's all right. Okay, so I'm going to use this stamp. Celebrate the good stuff. And this is my piece of cardstock. So this would be my card base. I am using the foam pad because I'm using a photopolymer stamp with it. And when you use the photopolymer, you have this little, like we talked about earlier, where I used my piercing mat with my photopolymers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay this on here where I want that to stamp. And then, oh, I forgot the magnets. I better grab them. So anyway, then you flip this shut and you pick up the stamp. And there's, yeah, I knew there would be ink on there. So on the back of this, I want to break it. So these are magnets and they're really strong. And if they cling together, you're going to break it. So I'm just going to use one magnet because that's really all you need. I just need my paper to stay in place. And then once I have that on there, I'm going to go ahead. And somebody else said, take an ink pad and lay an ink pad under there. And you'll get a little bit of just enough to ink that up, bring it over, stamp it down. And if you didn't get a good image, the nice thing about this, because I, I have ink everywhere right now. The nice thing about this is that if I didn't get a good image, I could actually re-ink it and stamp it. It would stamp on the exact same place. But the other thing I can do is I can move it down and I can either re-ink it or I can just bring it over and stamp it again and do a second image stamp and then bring it down and do a third image stamp and bring it down and do a fourth image stamp. So you can see how you can, uh, Put that on my way there. That is the stamp stamparatus. So it's going to be awesome. Makes a great background, real quick. I just, like I said, I just re ink that once and boom, 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 all the way down on my, my stamparatus. The other thing is, is if you have a stamp that's a two image stamp, such as, Just use the back of this cardstock. Now realize I'm just doing this off the cuff because I didn't even think about it till last minute. I'm going to do this little bow and I want it to stamp there. Whether I take this one off. <laughs> so I'm going to pick up that stamp. Ink it up. Okay, so there you see where it didn't ink that section right there. It's awesome because now I can show you how you just re-ink it and do it again, and then you get a perfect image. So that is one of the really nice things about it. Now this particular stamp has this piece that goes in there to stamp in between where the white is to give the shadow. And I'm going to take my other plate and pick that one up. And then I'm going to use a different color ink because I really want you to see that. And it probably isn't going to be the greatest, but I wanted to, I want you to see how easy it is to line up. So I'm going to go ahead and re-ink that shadow stamp and stamp it down. And I did really well, except that I blotched it right in the middle. But you can see now I've got it set so I can move this. Re-ink this one, stamp it. Oh, again, I didn't get a very good impression. I don't know why I'm not. It must be the pressure I'm using, so I'll just do that. I get a great impression. I come in with my second one and stamp that. And I have the perfect impression. So you can see how fast you can just do that over and over and over. And with the two plates, it gives you the option of two. But you could also flip this around and put a third stamp on there. So let's bring back this one. Add that on there. I hope this is making sense to people. Ink it up, stamp it down. Oh, see, it didn't stamp very well. This is going to be for those people that don't stamp very well. Okay, does that make sense? So I would do this. Let's open this up again. Got my bow, stamp that. Ink up the inside, stamp that. 
flip this around, stamp that. Didn't do it very well, so let's ink it up better. Stamp that. Still didn't do very well. <laughs> let's try that one more time. Let's make sure the mark the magnets on there. We're lined up. There we go. Does that make sense to people? So that's how you use a stamparatus to clean it off. You can just use a, a paper towel. I like to use a chamois um, cloth, which is just a absorb. It's called an absorber in the automotive section. This is a dried out one. It needs to be washed, but they're kind of damp. And then that just picks up the ink and you clean it off. Super easy to use. It's going to be fun. You can do lots of stuff with this. You can make lots of multiples of things, which will be nice. So I did a really good job smearing that there, didn't I? Oh, well. You guys get what I, you use, you know what I mean. So there is your Stamparatus. That was the name that tool today. And I will be sending out those kits to those three people along with the tutorial. So you need to send me, if I don't have your address, send me an email um, at uh, diane at ddstamps.com with your address because the tutorial will come through email and the package will come to your address. If I have your address, if you're a customer of mine and I have your address, then I will be able to uh, just send that to you. Cool. Well, we're almost done for the day. Thank you guys for hanging in there with me. I am, I'm really happy that I survived this. I feel good about it. And I know that I will be doing, I will be doing more online trainings because I like them and I like to share with people. I, I'm going to quickly, yeah, some people are typing up that they have their Stamparatus. Um, if you if you ordered it, pre-ordered it, they are they are going out to people. Check your check your email and make sure that you didn't miss it. I'm just gonna quick do a check for questions. Yes, Lorraine asked if you can use baby wipes. You certainly can. You want to make sure that you're using a baby wipe that doesn't have alcohol in it just because it's not good for your stamps. And sometimes baby wipes get things too sudsy. But yeah, baby wipes would work. Paper towel. Um, lots of things you can use. Did I miss any questions? Let's see. Love the tip about placing the stamp pad under the plate to keep it level. That actually, Wanda, that tip came from another demonstrator, and I loved it. It, it really does make a difference. Um, just a little bit of something under there helps. Cool. Okay, so it looks like everybody's questions are answered, which is awesome. Let me come back on. Let's see. Store prize drawing time. And actually today I have two door prizes I'm going to give away because it's been a while. So um, to fill out your door prize form, you need just need to go to in the YouTube, on YouTube, it's down in the in the description. There's a link there to hit the, the door prize form. Um, on Facebook, if there's a button that you can go ahead and hit. Click on and you will get to the door prize form. If you're on my website, there's a, should say click here at the underneath the, where the video is. And you can click there and get to the door prize form. The door prize form looks like this. Just go ahead and fill it out and submit. And what happens is it all gets populated into a spreadsheet for me on my end. And it is, uh, I'll give it a few minutes because sometimes it takes people a while to, to catch up to us. There's a little bit of lag time. So I actually pick a number beforehand. Before we get started, I pick a number. And today I picked number 25. Whoever, whoever lands on that spreadsheet in the 25 line gets to choose their, their stamp set first that they win. And then I decided at the last minute, what the heck, let's just go for it and I will do another door prize. So we'll have two and I'm just going to use the number 52. I'll just flip them around. So 25 and 52 are the winners and they're going to get to choose between a couple of stamp sets. I've got this one called So in Love, kind of springy. I love this one called uh, Feathery Friends. This is a hostess set that's in the current catalog. And then this is Cozy Cottage, which is a hostess set that's in the Occasions catalog. 
So the first person gets to choose which one they want. The second person gets to choose the other one. And the third stamp set, whatever they don't choose, goes back into my pile. And I will do it again in um, April. And I do plan to do these more often. So um, hang in there. So the winners are Ginger, Krabbenhoft. I hope I, I hope I didn't wreck your name. Ginger Krabbenhoff, and your email is actually gkrabbenhoff at Comcast. You are the winner of the first stamp set, Ginger. You will need to send me a message or an email. Let me know which one that you want. It's either So in Love, Feathery Friends, or Cozy Cottage. And then once Ginger does that, hopefully Ginger sends me either an email or a message on Facebook or YouTube. You can even, uh, in the comment section, you can let me know. And then the second winner is Diane Arn. Arnis, and that's arnisdiane at gmail.com. Congratulations. Diane, you get to choose the second lead, but you have to wait till I hear from the first winner. So now I'm just waiting. Sorry, I have to look. I'm look oh, there we go. So if you need my my email number is Diane or my email number. My email address is Diane at ddstamps.com. You can let me know in the comments which one you would like if you're if wherever you are. Yeah, congratulations to the winners. I love the two hinge design too, Joni, on my Stamparatus. Um my goal, my my newest goal is to stamp more. And uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. I do not see Ginger's email, but I will wait to hear from Ginger and then I will contact Diane after I hear from Ginger about which stamp set that you want, Diane. Um, and I will, what I do is I just pop them in the mail. So if anybody, if there's no more questions, Diane's happy she won. I'm glad I heard from you, Diane. Perfect. Okay. If there are no more questions, I'm going to make a quick... Ch oh, I just heard from Ginger. Yay! She wants Cozy Cottage. So, Diane, you can choose. Let me pull it up here. You can choose either So in Love or Feathery Friends as your door prize. And you just let me know. Ginger, send me your um, your address too. So that's exciting. So I've got the three packets I'm sending out as soon as I get the addresses for those people that won those and the two stamp sets. Yay, I'm back in business. And I had lots of people contact me we're very concerned and I thank you for that. Um, I appreciate it. And there was, it was, it's interesting. Okay. Diane wants the feathery birds, feathery friends, feathery birds. So I will get that out in the mail to you. Anyway, as long as I don't see any more questions, which I don't, I am going to say thank you for coming. I am glad that I'm here. I know my dog does want back in. Um, and she will get back in as soon as I'm done here. So if there's no more questions, and this is my last check here, I'm going to say thank you for coming. And I hope you have a good rest of your weekend. I hope I didn't forget anything. Well, if I did, next time. Anyway, take care and have a great weekend. Bye.